Welcome and hello to everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on Retailer's Guide to Food Safety, Optimizing Risk Assessment and Hats Planning for Emerging Risks to Your Private Label Products. I'm delighted to have you all here. This webinar is designed specifically for uh, food safety professionals in retail companies who are eager to enhance their food safety management systems and processes. So our focus for today will be on optimizing ingredient monitoring and assessment while proactively identifying emerging risks to your private label products. Um, with the supply chain disruptions, frequent recalls, and the ever-evolving impact of climate change on produce yields, food safety professionals face unprecedented challenges. As retailers, you are the last line of defense in ensuring that the products reaching your consumers are safe and of high quality. Yet, with the increasing complexity of global supply chains and the overwhelming volume of data to manage, traditional methods of risk assessment and health planning are proving inadequate. In this session, we will explore dynamic and proactive strategies to improve risk assessment and mitigation, streamline the development and update of the health plan, and develop a forward-looking approach to food safety. We will cover actionable insights and tools that will help you manage emerging risks and protect both your brand and your consumers. So moving on to what the focus of today's webinar will be, we will first begin with common practices and challenges in the retailers industry. We will share how today the risk monitoring and assessment is done and which are the challenges. Then we'll continue with the hazards identification and reporting where we will speak about how we develop monthly reports to highlight new emerging risks across your business units and globally. Then we'll discuss about dynamic risk assessment in order to learn how to perform dynamic risk assessments tailored to each region, retail shop, and manufacturing plant. We will then discuss about developing and updating HAS plan where we will basically discuss how we develop and update our HAS plan by including all the potential hazards and the emerging supply chain risks. And then we will wrap up this session with three client use cases for proactive food safety. We have prepared three practical use cases that demonstrate how you can use dynamic risk alerts, optimize testing plans, and risk dashboards to improve your food safety management. And I think it's now time to introduce our today's speaker, our expert speaker, and Yanis, if you would like to introduce yourself. Of course, thank you so much, Georgia. So it's, a, I'm very happy uh, to have this webinar because we have this webinar today that is focusing on such an important stakeholder in the and segment in the supply chain, which are the uh, retail uh, companies. Uh, so I'm, for those who do not know me, I'm uh, Yanis Stoitsis, I'm the CTO and partner in AgroNow, working for more than 10 years with large food brands to help them digitize the risk assessment, risk management and risk prevention workflows. Uh, in this webinar, I am going to share the common practices and challenges of retailers. I will uh, present some specific uh, client use cases. And through them, I would uh, my my goal is to uh, to show you how AI can, which is the role of the AI uh, in the risk assessment and uh, risk prevention. Uh, and last, but very important, I will present how a risk intelligence solutions like Fudakai can facilitate the development and the update of Hazard Plan. Uh, and all this will be through a real uh, client use cases. So moving to the next slide, uh, I in the first part of the webinar, I would like to talk about the common practices that we see uh, in the retail industry. Uh, so 
First of all, I would like to mention that despite their best efforts, many retailers still face limitations with their current practices uh, in risk uh, monitoring, risk assessment, and risk prevention. I will share the common practices that uh, we know that uh, the retailers are following right now. Uh, and then I will also share some of the most important challenges. So let's start with the common practices. Uh, regarding the risk monitoring, uh, many retailers uh, that we work and we speak to rely on manual checking a small number of official sources, like for instance the RASA for the FDA website, or even local authorities, and uh, they are checking for these uh, sources for alerts and notifications. Of course, this is very useful. Uh, but in some cases, such sources may not cover all emerging risks globally. Uh, and of course, the monitoring work of uh, the manual work, sorry, of the monitoring uh, is time consuming and labor intensive. Uh, so this is the uh, one uh, of the common practices. Uh, the second uh, common practice that we see is that... Uh, uh, we, we are still, Georgia, in the risk monitoring. So the second common practice that we see is that several companies are using uh, some early uh, warning and uh, alerting system to monitor all the available uh, incidents, food safety uh, and fraud incidents that are announced by the uh, food safety authorities all around the world. Uh, and another practice is in order to, to have a good risk monitoring is to follow and participate in experts groups uh, that are working on new emerging risks. Uh, and we see also some retailers participating in data sharing networks uh, that uh, can help them to, to identify authenticity and food fraud issues. Regarding the risk assessment, uh, Often, in the, the, the practices are focused uh, and are based on uh, intuition or, or the experience uh, that uh, the uh, experts have uh, in, the, in identifying and estimating and assessing the risks. Uh, there are many retailers that are adopting recommendations and guidelines that are published by food safety authorities about the most important risks in specific categories and specific ingredients and materials. Uh, and some of the retailers are also developing in-house risk assessment tools, which are mainly based on spreadsheets and there are matrices and uh, uh, risk this risk assessment matrices about the risk score for each uh, category. Uh, but the main uh, limitation there is that these tools usually are static uh, and it's time consuming to update uh, these tools with uh, new data about uh, emerging risk in the supply chain. As for the risk prevention, to prevent, uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, Georgia, to prevent risks in their supply chain, retailers rely on audits and testing programs, which are usually designed annually. Current strategies, all these uh, current strategies are uh, often rigid and reactive with plans that are changing only if we have a significant incident. Uh, there is a lack of proactive uh, engagement with external uh, experts and uh, the market. And uh, it's, it's very difficult to stay ahead of emerging threats. Of course, we see uh, other measures uh, that uh, retailers are implementing to ensure the effectiveness of their uh, food uh, safety approach. Uh, and we should mention uh, that uh, they are working very closely with uh, manufacturers of their private label own brand products. They uh, doing a lot of employee uh, trainings. They implement hygiene and sanitation programs. Uh, of course, they, they are handling properly and they store uh, and they monitor uh, the supply chain and they develop also hazard plans. 
I would like to further analyze uh, the HASP uh, part as it is very one of the very important preventive measures. So I will just give you an example here about uh, uh, an, a, a common HASP plan that can be applied in, for instance, uh, a specific category like uh, fresh produce. So the first step of this uh, of the HASP plan is, of course, uh, to conduct a hazard analysis. Uh, retailers are collaborating with suppliers to identify potential hazards, either these are biological, chemical, physical, fraud, authenticity issues. Uh, and this is a very critical step. The second very important step uh, in uh, HASP uh, that uh, retailers are implementing is to identify the key points in the supply chain where hazard should be controlled. Uh, the critical control points that are uh, called. So this is a, a, a very important as well. Uh, the third step is for these critical control points to establish and for each critical control point to set measurable uh, critical limits. Uh, and uh, very important is also to apply a variety, variety sorry, of monitoring programs and procedures to make sure uh, that uh, all these critical control points are controlled and limits are not exceeded. Uh, this, the, the fifth step in such a HACCP implementation that we have seen in uh, the retail industry uh, is uh, to define the and establish the corrective actions. Uh, so if we have a deviation from a critical limit, a uh, retailer has corrective, uh, a set of corrective actions in place. Uh, there are a lot uh, and several very important verification procedures. So the food safety and quality assurance teams, uh, one example is that regularly they audit suppliers and stores to ensure that HASA procedures are being followed and uh, all uh, the uh, control points are monitored. And last but also uh, important is to maintain detailed records for uh, the critical control points, like for instance, uh, have to have a temp uh, to have temperature logs, audit reports uh, from supplier and store inspections, result results from microbial and chemical testing and physical testing of foods. So these are the typical steps that we see right now being implemented in uh, uh, the retail industry uh, as it comes to HASP. Regarding the challenges, uh, I would like, first of all, to mention that uh, it, with supply chains, Georgia also commented this, with supply chains extending across the globe, and uh, food safety and quality teams are tasked with an enormous responsibility, eh? ensuring the safety of thousands of private label uh, products uh, across uh, across the supply chain is a very important uh, thing. And uh, the, the main challenge is uh, that there are a lot of things, a lot of parameters that need to be monitored by usually a quite limited team of food safety and quality assurance. So if we go specifically to the challenges that we have identified that are mentioned in the in this slide, uh, so I will start with uh, uh, the data over, uh, overload. Uh, so what we see is that uh, the, the experts in the retail uh, industry, they need to integrate very large scale and make sense and harmonize a very large scale external and internal risk data uh, and to use them to identify, uh, in, to identify trends and emerging risks, which is almost impossible if you have so many finished uh, products to monitor the private level about products. The second challenge is the complexity of the global supply chain. Managing a supply chain that spans multiple continents involves monitoring a multitude of foreign suppliers, each with its own set of risk and standards. This complexity makes it difficult to maintain uh, 
consistent and comprehensive view of all the potential threat, uh, threats uh, to product safety. Another challenge is the manual and uh, reactive processes. I already mentioned some of the manual processes that are needed for risk monitoring. Uh, but uh, if this, uh, what, what we can add here is that if for risk monitoring, risk assessment and risk prevention uh, for such a huge number of Finnish uh, products like the uh, private products that a retailer has, uh, if we need to do all this uh, manual work, uh, it's uh, really a hard thing and it's usually mainly leading to reactive uh, approach. Uh, we see also that one of the challenges is that traditional risk prevention plans often only change in response to major or well-known emerging risks. This reactive approach can leave companies vulnerable to unforeseen threats, putting both their finances, but also the brand, the reputation at risk. And last, uh, which is a very important uh, uh, challenge that we see, is that retailers are increasingly seeking ways, ways to automate their risk monitoring processes and gain access to timely updated risk uh, intelligence. The main goal that they have is to have a proactive strategy, but due to the challenges that we have already uh, discussed uh, with such a broad portfolio of products and thousands of suppliers to, to assess, the application of a more proactive approach seems uh, almost impossible so this is this is uh, these are the challenges that we see currently in the retail industry so i will uh, give you back uh, yeah the floor i will give the floor back to you georgia for the poll and then i will come back with the client use cases great Yanis, that was a very detailed um, explanation of the key challenges, definitely. So um, we would like to understand better which are the your main challenges and pain points, basically, that you have when it comes to risk monitoring, assessment, and prevention. So we have a poll prepared for you. I will launch it right now. It's a multiple choice uh, poll. You can choose more than one answer, basically. Um, so feel free to, to tell us your opinion about what your main challenges are. We'll take about three minutes for this poll till we get some answers in. So again, the question is, which are the main challenges or pain points that you have when it comes to risk monitoring, assessment, and prevention? Some results are coming in already. Okay, we'll wait for one more minute. Great. So definitely what, what we see from the results here, um, I think we can end it. Yeah, most of you have voted. Um, so basically, the results show us that most of you um, lean forward to the, the first option. Uh, the 75% is basically, they believe that they lack a comprehensive, reliable view of all external um, risks and hazards affecting their supply chain. 
Um, and then there are also um, the last and the, um, yeah, the fifth, the fifth answer is that many people agree on that they're unsure about whether to adopt AI. Um, so I guess we can move forward. Thank you all for participating in this poll. We have also another one uh, prepared for you later on. So I guess, Yanis, the floor is yours again. Yes, thank you so much. It's very interesting uh, to see which very are the main challenges. Yeah. And thank you so much all for uh, participating in this poll. So in this part, in this second part of um, the presentation, uh, we would like to introduce some client use cases that will be focusing on how to move from a reactive to proactive food safety. To address the challenges that we have already covered, uh, we will specifically for these three areas of risk monitoring, risk uh, assessment and risk prevention, uh, we will introduce three key use cases that provide practical solutions to enhance your risk management uh, strategies. These use cases specifically demonstrate how adopting a dynamic data-driven strategy can transform the food safety management from a reactive to proactive approach. So this is the goal. I will start with the first use case, which is very much aligned with most of the uh, answers that I saw in the in the poll, in the first poll. This use case is about uh, leveraging the real-time alerts uh, in order to quickly identify and address issues that may impact the supply chain of a retailer, reducing the manual monitoring efforts and ensuring timely communication with uh, the manufacturers of the PL uh, products. Eh? Uh, and the communication, of course, we mean communication about the preventive measures. So this is a use case. In this use case, we have uh, a retailer uh, that has over 6,000 private label on brand products. Uh, he has over 2,000 uh, PL manufacturers, uh, almost 10,000 uh, stores, uh, and uh, it's a global retailer and has uh, a global food safety team of 20 experts. The main pain point uh, is that uh, they are afraid that they will miss an important risk that can affect their 6,000 uh, PL products. What they need is uh, a system that will tell them that from the 6,000 products you have, you should focus on those 20, 30, 40 because uh, an emerging uh, issue, an emerging uh, hazard is found in the ingredients that come from these countries and from these companies uh, of these specific uh, products, uh, PL products. So this is what they really need because it's impossible to do all this analysis every time that I see something for all the uh, private label products. Uh. So let's see how such a, in such a use case, how a system like Futakai could uh, can help and help in the, in the specific case help the retailer. The first step in uh, if we want to provide such a solution and to, to, to cover such a need that I just described is to import in the food archive system all the private label products with their ingredients, suppliers and regions uh, and then the customization that we can have uh, can be specific, different for experts that need a high level view uh, of uh, the supply chain, of the risk of their supply chain. But also we can have a different customization for experts that need to focus on specific categories of PL products and on specific hazards. So it's a highly personalized approach that we, we are following here. But the most important uh, that you can see also in the slide is that for each PL private label product, like in this case, the, the cake, the PL cake product that I'm uh, showing, 
uh, we are importing all the information about the ingredients and uh, the regions of the ingredients and uh, of course the supplier. So all this information is connected into the systems, uh, into the system, into the Fudakai system. So what this, which is the capability that is, uh, if we move to the next slide, which is the capability that this opens and this uh, enable is that if we have this knowledge, uh, the retailer, our retailer here, receives email alerts highlighting which finished products may be affected by the increasing risk due to new, new incidents that are announced uh, for a, re a relevant ingredient material uh, that is used in this uh, specific uh, finished product, PL product. So I have an example here uh, of uh, an issue, for instance, uh, that was uh, announced uh, for uh, herbs and spices that may affect a, a product, a finished product, PL product like spi spice mix. A and this is directly highlighted in the alerts and also into the dashboard of the system. So using this information, the uh, team uh, of uh, the, uh, the FSC, uh, the Food Safety and Quality Assurance team, can go and can uh, make sure that they have the preventive measures in place for the specific finished product. In addition to getting these alerts, uh, both through an email, but also in, da in the dashboard, in the system dashboards for the PL products, we can get such emails also for the manufacturers of PL products. So if we go to the next slide, what we are showing here is that uh, our, our client is uh, also receives real-time alerts for manufacturers of the alert of the PL product. So every time that there is uh, an incident announced for this specific uh, PL manufacturer, uh, the company, the retailer is uh, informed about it. So they can communicate with the manufacturer and make sure that they have the preventive measure in place and they can clarify what was the issue that was uh, identified. So in this case, which is the business value that we see? If we go to the next slide, Georgia, in this case, the business value is mainly due to save efforts that we have from manually checking and verifying which of the 6,000 finished products may be affected by a food safety emerging risk that we see that is announced by an authority. Uh, we can we see that uh, our clients managed to reduce these efforts by 50% compared to the previous uh, practice that uh, he had to monitor and to identify which PL products uh, are affected, could be affected. Uh, and the other part of the other dimension that we have in the business value is that we can activate early, our client can activate early the preventive measures for the affected PL products. Uh, so they can prevent an incident uh, that is costly, uh, but also uh, such incidents have negative impact on the brand and on their reputation. So this is exactly what we are showing in a diagram that is doing this kind of analysis of the return of investment uh, in a period of three years. Uh, and that the, the parts that we are highlighting here is this part of automating. It's, it's the value that we can give, the savings that we can have by automating this uh, manual work. This is the first use case. If we go to the second use case, the second use case is about identifying hazards. So, and uh, in this in this use case, uh, I will speak about how we can leverage real-time food safety incidents data to quickly identify hazards that may impact the supply chain, my supply chain, and to ensure timely communication with uh, suppliers. So it, it's all about uh, making sure that we know all the hazards, all the potential hazards that my PL manufacturers need to consider uh, in order to have a safe product that will not be uh, recalled or uh, at the border uh, at borders or uh, it, we we will not have some import rejection uh, 
Uh, here we have again a global retailer uh, in our in this case uh, that has again thousands of uh, private uh, label products, uh, more than two thousand private label manufacturers, uh, fifteen thousands of stores all around the world, a global food safety and quality team of uh, eleven experts, uh, and the main characteristics here here for this. Uh, uh, client is that product portfolio drastically changed in the last 12 months. So the main point in this, the main pain point, sorry, in this case, uh, uh, was that uh, retailer in the last uh, two years, he had uh, several incidents, mainly because his foreign suppliers uh, were not able to identify all the potential hazards and they don't know uh, how to manage this, uh, the risks that are linked to these hazards for the ingredients that are using. So they had a lot of issues uh, that were related to the raw materials that uh, their suppliers were sourcing uh, in order to produce uh, their uh, private label product. The situation that they had uh, until we started working together is that the experts team of our client performed uh, hazard analysis internally based on the product specification and then they were asking their suppliers the, the manufacturers what measures they have in place for these risks uh, however uh, such a hazard analysis was static and the foreign suppliers uh, they did not have the tools to identify all the potential hazards so the, there were still gaps in this part of the hazard analysis. If we go to the, to the next slide, Georgia, uh, I will. I am explaining how Fudakai helped the retailer. So first of all, as also in the use case one, all the PL manufacturers and the, the source ingredients for each PL manufacturer were imported in Fudakai for continuous monitoring. Eh? This uh, allows, uh, if we go to the next lab, the slide, the, the very, uh, it, it was if we do this process, it's very easy for the food safety and quality assurance team to identify all the potential hazards uh, for all the, for, for especially for new ingredients uh, that they have introduced in their supply chain, like herbs and spices, seafood that are coming from specific regions. And these hazards, we can create hazards reports for all these emerging uh, issues and share the reports of hazards with PL manufacturers and ask them to provide a food safety plan that covers all the potential hazards. So this is what uh, our client uh, did, uh, and uh, it was uh, very. This was very efficient. Uh, another thing, if we go to the next slide, another thing that uh, our client managed to do using the Fudakai is that for each of the PL manufacturer, uh, they can they have a dynamic risk assessment dashboard uh, that uh, uses data and combines data from recalls, border rejections, and inspections. So they, they have a very good knowledge of the food safety history. Uh, and uh, with this, with the risk estimation, with this risk, dynamic risk for each manufacturer, they were also able to design more efficiently the audits, the, the plan of the audits, reducing the frequency of audits for low-risk suppliers and increasing them uh, on the high-risk ones. So these are uh, this is another part. And uh, one last part, uh, which was very critical, is uh, the use of forecasts for incident strength, but also for specific hazards come, uh, for specific regions. Uh, which allow the proactive communication uh, with suppliers. Uh, so uh, using uh, predictive analytics like the ones that I'm showing here for the case of herbs and spices, they are able to identify specifically which emerge, which are the emerging hazards, which are the hazards that are likely uh, to increase in such a in uh, uh, for for this for the ingredients that are, they are getting from specific regions, uh, so and use this information as I mentioned to communicate with the uh, uh, PL manufacturers. So in that in this use case, the business value uh, is focusing 
we go here. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, in terms of business value, today our client can be sure that uh, his foreign suppliers, the PL, private label manufacturers, have uh, preventive measures for all the potential hazards, for all the products, uh, products sorry, that will be sold in, in Europe. Uh, and uh, they, can, they could also reduce the cost uh, from uh, th for the audits, but also uh, the costs from the rejected containers because it happened several times uh, to our client before using uh, Fudakai uh, that they were uh, sending containers to Europe uh, for some reason that was not for some hazards that were not foreseen uh, by the foreign suppliers. These containers were rejected, so there there was a. Uh, a very large cost of uh, rejected uh, of uh, uh, these rejected uh, containers, and this is what we are highlighting uh, in the business value journey in the uh, in the next three years. In the last the last use case, we'll, we'll focus the third use case. We'll will focus on one of our clients and how. Uh, he used uh, uh, the real-time hazards analysis and the dynamic risk assessment that the FUDECA is providing to update uh, the HAS plan. Here, uh, the profile of uh, the retailer is a bit uh, smaller in terms of the number of the PL products, but still uh, we are talking about thousands, uh, a smaller amount of uh, stores, but also smaller amounts of uh, experts. And the pain point uh, is uh, how to implement a HACCP system for specifically for fresh produce. Uh, and uh, previously they had several incidents because biological uh, chemical hazards were found exceeding the limits and not compliant to the regulation were found uh, in several uh, fresh produce products. Uh, so it was for them. It was very hard to do the update of HACCP because this is time-consuming, and usually is all, only done when we have a very serious issue eh, in an, a reactive way. So the solution that the, the retailer needed is a process to update the HACCP plan for all the potential biological and chemical issues. They needed a system that can help very much in the, the identification of potential hazards and on defining the critical control, control points and defining also the limits for each critical control point. So what we did is we, uh, we, we, we collaborated with uh, our uh, client uh, and for each step of this uh, HASA plan that they had for fresh produce, uh, we uh, checked and we uh, discussed and we defined how the Fudakai, the insights for the hazards that he can, that the client can get from Fudakai could help. So in the first step in to identify all the potential hazards and have a real dynamic view of this, uh, uh, of new hazards and new issues in the supply chain, uh, the hazards analysis uh, that uh, we have based on real time data was very useful, so they managed to create a list of all the potential hazards for fresh produce. In the second step that has to do with uh, determining the critical control points, uh, based on the frequency, if we go to the next slide, Georgia, based on the frequency of, this, uh, of the hazards, uh, as I'm highlighting in the, in the right side of this slide, uh, based on the frequency, uh, they took the decision for which hazards they need to have a critical control point. Uh, so for the most frequent ones, it was very obvious that they needed and uh, they wanted just to check that they have all the critical control points. But also the system provides the probability and the severity and the risk score for each of these issues for, for fresh produce. So they were also able to take an informed decision uh, using this risk score. Uh, in another, the next step, in the step of establishing critical limits, since in a system like Fudakai, uh, we have also data about testing results for fresh produce 
or chemical uh, and physical issues, uh, they could also check, uh, they could also define uh, for specific issues like acephate, for specific incesticide uh, like uh, acephate, which should be the limit, not only based on the regulatory uh, requirements, but also based on, uh, on real data and real uh, results for this specific product, uh, like uh, the lettuce uh, that is tested uh, annually uh, by the government. So they have also the data about which specific limit they could add into the specification. So they help them also very much to define the specifications. And uh, I will move to the last part, which is the record keeping, which is very important in uh, HASA plan. So, uh, and uh, it's uh, it, it's very helpful to have uh, in a central place stored all the uh, records. Either these are the audit reports uh, for our PL manufacturers or the testing results. So all these things can be also done uh, in Fudakai. I'm showing here the example of how all the testing results uh, of the monitoring program that is implemented by a, a retailer can be stored uh, in the uh, system and uh, it can be continuously monitored. You can have insights and you can uh, check which are the most uh, important issues that uh, uh, we have for the uh, based on the monitoring results. And I will close this last uh, use case by highlighting which is which was the business value or in this specific case. Uh, so it's the main goal, as I mentioned, it was to establish a dynamic HASA plan that can be updated uh, every time that we have new important uh, incidents and to do that uh, through a process and uh, in a semi-automated way. Uh, and this is what allows the prevention of incidents in fresh produce. This is the, the goal and this is the, the most important business value. And which the, the incidents, as we mentioned, are costly and have a negative impact on the on the brand. So this is what we are highlighting, highlighting in the business uh, value chain in the return of investment that uh, the retailer uh, has from this, uh, from the implementation of such a process. Thank you, Yaris. Back, back to you, Georgia, for the last poll and then to, to sum up. Thank you very much. Yeah, th these were some very interesting um, client use cases. We talked about different business values. So now we have our second poll which is about, it's connected to business values actually. And basically the question is, which of the following do you consider the number one value adding dimension for your business? So this is a single choice question. Um, there are five options and you can choose which one do you think that it's the number one, the most important value adding dimension for your business. So we'll take again around two, three minutes for people to answer and then we'll share again the results. Great, I think most of you have answered. So um, we can go ahead and end the poll. I think the most the most important business value for, for the most was the first one in order to save efforts when it comes to monitoring food safety incidents. That's very interesting. And also the last one, when it comes to preventing food safety incidents for private label products. Thank you. Thank you once again for participating in this poll.
And I think we can move forward and closely wrapping it up. Um, we now have the floor open to questions. We'll have a Q&A session for the next five, 10 minutes. So feel free to, to ask any questions that you like, and we'll make sure to, to answer um, to most of them. Great, I see the first question. Um, so the question is, is it possible in such a system to easily see the global trends of food safety instance for all the product categories? Yeah, that, that's a good uh, point because I, I focus very much on how we can make it very specific uh, uh, covering uh, details of the supply chain, like which are the ingredients that I want to monitor, which are the, the PL products, the suppliers. Of course, if there are roles in the food safety and quality assurance teams that they they need to have a global overview, yeah, this is possible. We can, we can set up uh, a customization that will look on the main food categories. Uh, and for all these food categories, that includes, of course, uh, many different specific ingredients, but for all these uh, food categories, we can provide uh, in the system, in the dashboard of the system, we can provide a table with the most important issues, which are the increasing issues, uh, which are the uh, emerging ones, the increasing risk for which ingredient, for which categories we have increasing risks, which are these risks. So, yeah, it is possible also to have such a global view. Great. Thank you, Yanis. I see also another question. So how are the forecasts for incidents estimated? That's also an interesting question. Yeah, it's interesting. And this is, there are always a lot of questions about the application of artificial intelligence. Yeah, so we use uh, machine learning mainly, which is one specific uh, um, part of artificial intelligence. We use machine learning algorithms to forecast the trend of the incidents and the trend of specific hazards, as I mentioned. To do this forecasting, we are using data about the historical uh, food safety incidents, which include border rejections and recalls. We, we, we use the testing results from the uh, global uh, residues monitoring programs that the uh, governments are implementing, and we use also weather data. So all these data are combined in order to forecast which will be the trend of the incidents, but also the trend of specific hazards uh, for specific regions. So this becomes specific for hazards and regions. Uh, and we use to monitor the performance of these models, of this forecast, uh, we use metrics, accuracy metrics, uh, that uh, uh, are generated using uh, the historical uh, uh, results that we have for the forecast and also the actual incidents that we have historically. Uh, so we continuously monitor because the main goal is to deliver uh, something that is reliable in terms of uh, the forecasted trend. Thank you, Jan. These answers, but we can always, if there is a specific question, we can always answer them after the, um, the webinar. Feel free yeah, to go to Definitely. Uh, there's also one last question um, in the poll. Uh, is it possible to reduce the noise in terms of receiving incidents that are not relevant to my supply chain? And I think after this question... Yeah. Yeah, this is this is exactly that. That's a very good uh, way of uh, describing uh, the the customization that we are doing because this is exactly what we are trying to achieve with the customization, with importing all the characteristics, all the information about uh, the private label products, the ingredients, the regions, and the suppliers that you need to to monitor and not to have any ingredient, any supplier, any region. Eh? So, because in that case, you will get a lot of 
non-relevant uh, uh, not relevant information so yeah uh, this uh, this can be done and we can reduce such noise by making specific uh, the part of the supply chain that you will monitor great thank you yanis i think it's time to wrap it up if there are any other questions feel free to email us um, let us know and we'll make sure to answer them before wrapping up, we also have some interesting findings, um, last but not least. While registering for this webinar, you submitted a survey where you answered to one question and specifically to, um, to the question right here, in what food safety decisions would forecasting incidents and risk trends for your supply chain help you? Um, and we thought that it might be interesting to share those results with you. And most of you answered, the 66% actually, that uh, it would help you to take into consideration emerging threats when performing supplier history and performance and ingredient risk assessment. Uh, so most of you lean forward to this answer. Um, I think that's, that's very interesting. So what are your thoughts on this one, Yanis? Actually, it's. I would say that I, I would expect something like that uh, because I hear it a lot working with uh, with uh, retailers and uh, uh, companies in the food industry uh, that usually uh, the the uh, we have incidents and these companies have incidents because it, they cannot identify early these emerging threats. So it's this reactive approach leads to have some uh, incidents. But the, I see also other very interesting and very important uh, findings here. So it's it's very useful. Thank you for sharing this, yeah. Great. And I think, yeah, it's- Yeah, it's with that, yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah, we can conclude. And thank you so much for, for being with us today in this uh, webinar. If you want to find out how uh, we can help you to make more dynamic your HASA plan, to streamline this, this process, uh, we can have a dedicated session. So please uh, feel free to scan here the, uh, the QR code or to use the link and uh, book a call and we can uh, discuss together specifically how this could be implemented uh, for your food safety approach, for your food safety strategy uh, to strengthen uh, this approach and to help you to move from the from being more reactive to become more proactive. So very happy to, to, to follow up uh, after this webinar on that. Yes, thank you very much. So as Yanis said, uh, feel free to scan the code or type the link uh, if you if you cannot uh, scan the QR. And thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for answering to the polls, for joining us. Um, I, we hope that you find this session interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.